Hello and welcome to today's video. So on the workbench today we have three modified Nissan Leaf BMS units. So you can see I've re replaced uh, Nissan's microcontroller with my interposer board and my microcontroller. And if you look really closely, I've added the uh, jumper wire here on the LIN bus to these guys. And that's essentially bypassing that's this jumper right here. So we're moving, uh, we're, we're jumping over uh, BMS chips six and seven and 18 and 19 because we're not, they're not powered. If we didn't do that, then Lin, Lin bus communication, it's a serial chain. They propagate from one to each, you know, one to each other. And if we don't bypass that, then the unpowered chips won't pass the signal through. And yeah, it's like a Christmas tree lights. One bulb goes out the whole string dies. So if one of the chips is not powered, the whole string goes down. So that's all we're doing is we're bypassing the unpowered chips because we're doing the uh, we're doing 40 cells and 40 cells. We've removed eight and eight here. So hopefully that makes sense. So you might be asking, so these two are destined for the truck, but you might be asking what's the third one for? And that's for development because <laughs> it's been really cold recently. Like really, really cold, like wind chills in the negative 45 degrees cold. And I don't want to work out in the garage. <laughs> so that's what this guy's for. Um, so if you watched the last video, I, I mentioned some, I ordered a bunch of parts for the pack sniffer two. Those are supposed to be here Friday so that I could work on it on the build them up over the weekend. That didn't happen because the mail doesn't move when it's really, really cold. So that's, that's been delayed. Uh, might be able to do it this weekend. We'll see. Um, but yeah, so all of the parts to build packs and for twos and all the parts to populate the uh, rest of the IO on here. Um, uh, I think in the last video I was, I showed what all the new IO is going to be controlling. One other thing, uh, will be, uh, one of the IO lines will be used as a, essentially a unit ID because I have two identical ones and I want the code to be the same. So right now they would stomp on each other. They'd be sending out packets at the same CAN addresses. So what I'll do is um, one of these will just be, if it's left floating, it'll act like it'll be at the regular address range. And then if you ground one of the I.O. lines, the unit ID I.O. line, it'll be done in the harness. Then the other unit will just add 10 hex to its base um can message so like all the other messages will be will increment by that same amount so they will be at different can addresses and not stomp on each other so that's very useful um and that that allows each one to just run the exact same code and if you need to update or make changes to them you can you, you have a unique address for each one so you can actually do that so yeah hopefully that makes sense uh this guy like I said, it's for development, and if you notice, it's got a jumper wire on it too, but it goes all the way across. And that's because we're just using the chip on this side and the chip underneath it, the chip on this side and the chip underneath it. And that's because if we come over here, we built another battery pack. So this is actually all the spare batteries for that came out. So you know how I I bap, bypassed um, the the eight cells and eight cells. Well, that's that's your eight cells. That's the other eight cells. So yeah, four modules. There's two cells in each one. Uh, there's actually four, but it's two S two P. So I consider it just to be two cells, even though there's you can see there's four in there, but two of them are in parallel, <laughs> and then two are in series. So. Um, yeah, so I went ahead and built this. This is a, uh, I guess it would probably be around 60 volt nominal. I can actually, it is all wired up. So <laughs> you might be asking, wait, why didn't you just stack all four on top of each other? That's a good question. <laughs> that would have made more sense, but I didn't have any pieces left over to do that. So this is built out of the leftover parts that I had from making the other, uh, BMS uh, interconnect or the yeah the interconnects and the the BMS harness, so this is all actually all wired up. It 
you can see the the two connectors are here and um yeah it's it's hooked up we can uh put this on voltage here and can actually measure it's uh i think this side's positive maybe uh there you go 63 volts and I don't know good, but yeah, 63 volts. So yeah, and then uh, because we've bypassed the uh, chips, we've got uh, this guy right here. We'll just plugs in right like this, and then this guy will plug in over here. And we don't need anything in between. So we've just got the two chips on this end. There's the one on the back side and this one are powered and the one on the back side and this one are powered and that's it so we should be able to um, program this uh, do some development uh, my plan is to essentially do a LIN bus integrity check so when I boot up I'm gonna send a uh, known packet through make sure it propagates the whole chain if it does then I know that LIN bus is intact and functional then I'll query the address for every chip on there and uh, mark which ones I can communicate to uh, and then, so we can kind of auto detect how it's wired, because um, each one of these has its own LIN address. And then, um, yeah, so we can auto detect that. And then, I haven't decided yet if we're going to put out like, you know, like this would be cells one through eight, and then technically this would be the last eight cells. So it'd be like, you know, ninety six, ninety five, ninety four, ninety three. You know, the very end. And then it'd be like zero volts for everybody in between. So I I don't know. I can't, haven't decided if I'm going to just use absolute addressing of where they physically are on the chip uh, on the BMS unit, or if I should just do, okay, so I found these two, these four chips. So cells one through four are on here, uh, five through eight are on the other side, and then, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12, and then 13, 14, 15, 16 on the bottom. So haven't decided yet. If you got any um, suggestions, I'm open to those. And um, yeah, I think that's it. Um, oh, oh, oh. Uh, one other interesting thing. Uh, because these guys came from the one battery pack. So these four, four uh, modules came from one battery pack. And these four modules came from a different battery pack. You can see here that they are actually different voltages. So this is this guy is 7.83 and then they should all be really close if I can get good contact 7.85 we have a dog jersey 7.83 7.83 but then this guy since it came from a different battery pack, the other battery pack was a different state of charge. You can see this one is 7.94. And Jersey, you're going to like electrocute yourself. 7.95. So uh, we've got different voltages between this half and this half, which will be really good because then we can actually have this guy uh, balancing them. So yeah, we can go, yeah, yep, these guys are higher. We got to bleed them off. So that'd be cool. The little balance uh, resistors are all in through here. Those are the bigger 1206 packages. But yeah, that'll be pretty cool. So you can test that out too. So anyways, um, yeah, that's uh, current progress. Thanks for watching. Bye. And yeah, I'm going to put the covers on there so the dog doesn't electrocute herself. <laughs> I guess she'll learn pretty quick not to, not to snip it. But anyways, um, yeah, I could probably cover these up first. <laughs> anyways, thanks for watching. Bye.